Money-wise, I don't think we're doing that good because nobody here has a job. When we go places, we see people in nice houses or not that many rundown places. They have things to do, places to go. There's really nothing to do right here, so. I'm not that much afraid about it, but sometimes I do think about my future, like where am I going to end up? We we'll just try to hope for the best. This is Nick News with Linda Ellerby. America's Forgotten Children, the Rural Poor. Now from New York, here is Linda Ellerby. You already know that the world is sliding into hard times economically. Some people are losing their homes, others are losing their jobs, and almost everyone is worried about having enough money. But there are areas of the United States where families, including kids, were already struggling with a shortage of money and have been doing so for a long time. And who knows, maybe these families have something important to say to the rest of us. Usually when we think of poverty in America, we think of big cities. This time we're going to look at rural America, where in a beautiful country landscape, one in every five kids is poor. That number hasn't changed in 40 years. And rural poverty is often made worse by isolation. So these kids might look the same as you, but they are not living the same lives as you. Our last story takes us to Moorhead, a small rundown town in the Mississippi Delta of the American South. Many of the shops in Moorhead are boarded up. There are few job prospects. The overall education level is not good. And there are almost no examples of success in Moorhead for a kid to look up to. But sometimes even one is enough. History plays a huge part in poverty. Even after slavery ended, black Americans were educated separately and in inferior schools. Because of that, they often got the worst jobs and had the least to look forward to. And in some parts of the country, that hasn't changed much. Kenyon lives with his mother and little brother. His father is not in the picture. But his future is, and it's bright, even in Moorhead. It's a very, very small town. There's a lot of rundown places. The people here, they're not making that much money. Everyone's right here in the same boat, probably. Just enough to get by. We're doing pretty bad to other places I've seen. My name is Kenyon. I'm from Moorhead, Mississippi, and I'm 15 years old. It makes me feel, you know, like we can do better or like the government can help out more. Like our little town just going away, like they just forgetting about us. We have two plants here. There's a lot of fish farms around here. People stink me, get out work, and I don't want to do that kind of job. But I like to own one. You know. It's a small area in the Delta, so there are not many jobs that can be in this town. My name is Tanjanikia, and I'm Kenyon's mother. I have lived in Moorhead all my life. Moorhead has the population of about 800 people. Very small town. I'm not working at this moment. I don't have a whole lot of money, but we're okay. We need recreation in our community for our kids. We need more after school programs for our kids, because we have some kids that don't have, I call it get up. Don't have any get up about themselves, so we need more mentors. Just come with that Jackson cut, y'all. Come on. I have friends around here that don't want to do better. I tell them, like, why don't you want to go out and just make money, or why you just want to sit around here, be the same way like your mama and your daddy was? We're being nice. We're being around, sitting around. <laughs> don't pay attention to me usually. I want a lot of stuff. I want a um, car, a bigger house. I want a dog. It really don't bother me. In the future, I can do work for it. I can get it. What makes me worry about money is going to college. Kenyon comes from a single parent home, and he does struggle financially, and he doesn't have the nice things that a lot of other kids may have in terms of the sneakers and the clothes and all those things that so many kids think are valuable. 
My name is Greg McCoy, and I'm the executive director of the Sunflower County Freedom Project. The Sunflower County Freedom Project is an organization that helps kids prepare for college and let you experience different things that you don't experience around here. What students in the Delta often get caught up in is the level of acceptance uh, that they have for some of the conditions that are here. We have students that don't understand how high they can go to prepare them to become community leaders, college-bound students. One of the cycles that has to be broken is this idea that students can only achieve at a level that they have seen in this area. They want us to come alive so we can be used to being on time or being committed to something. It gives me more discipline. They don't realize how much they are in control of their future. So what we're doing on a daily basis is reminding them that you can do better. So that's going to happen in a variety of ways. They're going to have a study session. Then they're going to be asked to come back on a Saturday morning and get up and be parts of extracurricular classes and, and some en enrichment classes. What we want to do is we want to just go through this scene one of the things that we've learned in the Freedom Project is the value of a student to be able to express themselves in a way that communicates ideas to a large group of people outside of their normal comfort zone. So what we've established is a civil rights-based drama program. They're going to get to do these things in places all over the country. We take tours so that they get to meet different people and see how people live in Atlanta, how people live in New York, how people live in Texas or even California. What types of things are working over here that I can bring back and help my town and my community become a better place? Being the Freedom Project, it helps me, you know, get used to the world outside of Moorhead. Around here, there's not too many black successful people, but when I go out there, I see plenty of black successful people, and I know that I can do better just like they did. I've known Kenyon for about three years now, and what excites me about working with him is his level of understanding that the world is really big, and I need to be a part of that. What I think about Kenyon's future, with the attitude he has, I believe he would be successful. I don't believe in getting stuck in a cycle, because if you put your head to it, your mind to it, you can do and be whatever you want to be. I think he already has broken out of the cycle. I thank you, sir, for acting because it's the reason why we're here today. He came into the program already a star, and what we've been able to do is to try to push him to the next level. I want to be better than what I have here. I want to go to college, and, you know, and then come make some money, and come back and give to the community, put up stores, and put things that I didn't have when I was here.